Hey guys, welcome back. So in this lesson, we are going to finally look at Sage Starter Theme. We will try to answer a few questions. For example, what is it that Sage is trying to do different? How is it going to affect our WordPress theme development experience? Right? What sort of a tools come out of box when we start working with Sage Starter Theme? Okay, so to kick start, let's talk about Sage. I mean, what is Sage? So from a bit of a research that I did online and basically read a lot of things, what I have concluded that Sage is trying to bring the modern ways of web development into WordPress, okay? And specifically theme development, right? So that's the whole sort of, you know, the, the pushing force behind it, okay? It makes a bunch of tools available to you out of box so that your team development doesn't suck too much, okay? And I, I believe there was a joke on your Slack channel uh, that the root IO, which is basically the people behind Sage and Bedrock and Trellis, that they should change their headline to a bunch of tools that make WordPress development suck a little less, okay? And the Sage creators basically talk about Sage as, I believe that you have worked with Underscore, an amazing starter team, but according to them, if Underscore is 1,000 hours sort of a head start, then Sage is 10,000, and it is true, okay? Right, so now let's move on and see what are some of the benefits. I believe the first benefit is dry principle that you don't have to repeat yourself. It doesn't get in your way of, you know, how traditionally WordPress work with the template hierarchy, but what it does do that it lets you separate, you know, the concerns or the repeating code, put it somewhere and make it reusable. Okay. We are going to look into that shortly, okay? So don't worry. It modernizes the build process by introducing Webpack, right? Where you can have a live, re live reloading happening. You can have the um, hot module replacement. What it really means, the HMR, that for example, if I am working with JavaScript and I am working in a particular component where that component relies on certain data. Now, if I were to refresh the page, that means I have to start all over again, right? But with the hot module replacement, it basically sticks with that data so that, you know, if, for example, you refresh, it only changes the visual elements. And I'm, I'm basically very much crucifying the whole um, idea behind the HMR, but that's just for you to have a quick understanding. And that's what it's trying to do, right? It doesn't let go of that data that that component depends on, but it lets you reload stuff. For example, if you put an input in or if you put another sort of a variable, it will still refresh that for you, but it will hold on to the data. Say it also comes with dependency management tools. For example, Composer or YARN and NPM for the, you know, JavaScript modules. And that makes it quite powerful because Composer is a package manager and you've got thousands and thousands awesome packages out there. And that means that by only one, running one command, Composer require a set, you know, whatever pro project that you want. Now that project is, um, or that package is in your project and you can just start using it. Okay. So it's, it's a, it's very powerful. You know, it is, I must say that it is pushing now WordPress to the limit. Okay. Before we come and demystify controller, let's have a quick look at Sage um, project setup, the different files it has, or what are the benefits of these files. Okay. So let's do that first. Okay. So now I am in my editor of choice which is PHP Storm. I have already loaded the theme, uh, which is the forked version of Sage 9 theme. 
with slightly ever so modification of having Laravel Mix as a task runner and having Vue.js rather than the jQuery. Okay, so these are a couple of modifications that Robinworks had already configured. So rather than us going ahead and doing everything from the scratch and reinventing the wheel, we just cloned his repository and thanks to him. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the folder structure here. Now, what you will see is you've got app, config, dist, resources. Node modules, obviously these are your um, JavaScript dependencies and node dependencies. The vendor folder is basically your composer packages, any PHP packages that this project depends upon or you need anything. As I mentioned, you can run composer require and it will just bring that dependency for you. So for example, if you look at it, all your PHP packages, you can find them here on the packages. So if you're working with Carbon, then you would just go ahead and require this in your project. Okay. I mean, this is taking the WordPress development to the next level, right? Who would have thought we would have access to the Composer packages in WordPress theme? But there we go. That's what says 9 is trying to do, right? Make our lives a lot easier. The same thing with the Node Packet Manager, so NPM. You can look for the, uh, for the packages that you need and you can require them. So that's what the node modules is about. All your JavaScript and node dependencies, right? You've got a resources folder. So let's start. So the first thing, let's have a look. Webpack.mix.js, which again, if you have downloaded the same repository that I have cloned, so you will have access to the Laravel mix. If you wanted to know more about Laravel mix, please go to the documentation, read about it. It is very easy. And I promise you, you don't need to know much about Webpack for you to start working with Webpack. That's what, you know, Laravel Mix does, okay? And then you've got Tailwind.js. Uh, even though this project is using 0 0.6, and I believe even the Sage 9 starter team is using 0 0.6, but since then, Adam Witten, who's the creator of Tailwind, he has released version 1 and it's excellent if you wanted to know more about it by all means go to the tailwind css documentation and then you've got so if you looked into the web pack tailwind let's have a look at the package.json yeah so all your dependencies are here composer.json which basically brings in all the php projects as we talked about these are the dev dependencies that means that when you are developing these are the you know, packages that you will rely on. So anything that you would work with in your development environment, you will basically put them or you will require them in your required dev block. Any other hardcore package packages that you need, you will actually just require them and Composer will go ahead, put it in here for you and auto load it for you. Another thing to note, which is very, very cool, that you've got PSR4 auto loading. That means anything in the app project will be namespaced with app. So that means here. Okay. So let's have a look at the folders now. Your resources basically have, you know, your views. It has the functions.php file. I would highly recommend to have a quick read through and see, you know, how things are happening. Okay. Sage also used container from Laravel. Very, very cool. Uh, we will have a look at it and we will talk about it and play around with it sometime um, soon. Okay. So then you've got the main index.php file and obviously it is being left blank. And then you've got your views. And these are the files that you would find, you know, in a traditional theme, right? So your 404 index and everything here because Sage 9 uses the Blade templating language. They have put everything in the views here, okay? And behind the scene, they have configured everything for you. If you remember the, w, the WordPress template hierarchy we talk about, so when WordPress is looking for a file, they've configured it in a way that if it is looking for the index.php file, it will internally navigate it to the index.blade.php file. So that's the setup. Assets. It contains all your fonts, images, JS, obviously your SAS, 
and when you run the mix as a task runner it will copy everything from here to your distribution which is the disk folder here okay great config folder has all your configuration values okay so assets basically is all about the assets uris where the assets are team same we where the views are because what blade does as well that it will cache all your files okay so if you look at it this is where it will cache your file all the files okay and it will if you look into your wp upload directory which is always your uploads but here i think it's called the base directory that's where it put all the cache files okay then if you look in your app folder admin.php is anything to do with the backend or the admin side of thing you will come here and put the actions or the hooks whatever you want to do the same the wordpress things you will put it here so custom post type it, it's not part of the sage line starter team it comes along with this uh, forked version that we cloned and it just helps you in give you the example code if you want to go ahead and create any custom post types filters.php all your filters will go in here helpers.php anything any helpers that you want to create you would put it into this file so setup.php file is the one where you will be probably spending more time sage uses it for basically incurring all the scripts and everything okay and if you wanted to make any modifications or any changes then you can go ahead and put it here as i said sage uses it to enqueue the assets register any navigation menus sidebar and you know add the core functionality okay so that was basically a quick run through of sage 9 starter team setup okay